Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Uh, Shalom, everybody. <laughs> did I say Shabbat? I did say Shabbat. <laughs> Shalom, everybody. How are you guys doing? All right. We have a Shabbat coming. Right. <laughs> and then we're prepared for the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, we greet you all, brothers and sisters, in the name of Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, Anawa Adono. Yache Mesiaka and our mother Ruaka Kwadoshi to our brothers and sisters that we've been communing with. Greetings to you all, Ekene or Chalam. And to those of you who are new, greetings. How are you? Hope you all enjoy this opportunity and we welcome you to the page. I am Kosafo. And I am Zekwa. And we are Hebrew readers here at the Pillar of Egypt. Enjoying and rejoicing in our Lord and Savior, the Adono Yache. And we are glad to have you here. We just had the Feast of Atonement. And then very thankful because we have Yache. And we know we have opportunity to be saved if we continue in the faith and really focus as we draw near to the end of this world. Right. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles is coming up. And we're going to quickly look at some scriptures to understand how the feast was implemented, what's the feast about in a nutshell, and how we keep it as it's coming in. And you can also visit the website. There's also a PDF on the website to download, and you can look at the scriptures there as well. So the Feast of Tabernacles. This is Koga Nsoka. There's actually a city in Nigeria, in Igbo land to this day, called Nsoka. And it's the same root word as the word soka when you look in the Hebrew language because the Bantus still speak the Hebrew dialect. All right, let's start at uh, Jubilees chapter 16, verse 16 to 22 and verse 25 to 31. Go ahead and see when the feast was actually revealed in the earth. Jubilee chapter 16, verse 16. And we returned in the seventh month and found Sarah with child before us, and we blessed him. And we announced to him all the things which had been declared concerning him. These are angels. When he says we, this is Yacha and his angels speaking, okay? That he should not die till he should beget six sons more and should see them before he died. And those six sons more were the sons of Ketori that he ended up having. But that and Isaac should his name and seed be called. Because Isaac was a child by promise. Okay. And that all the seed of his sons should be Gentiles. And this is why Abraham's children, the Ishmaelites and the sons of Keturah, which are biblically known as the children of the east or the men of the east and the Midianites are amongst those. Those are the children of Abraham. Yet they are reckoned as Gentiles. That's why they are not reckoned as Hebrews. It's Abraham the Hebrew in the scriptures. Then when you look in the book of Jasha, you see Isaac the Hebrew and Jacob the Hebrew. And his sons are called the Hebrews. Even in the book of Exodus, when Yahshua came down and he sent Moses and Aaron, he said the Allahim of the Hebrews. So you can understand that the 12 tribes of Israel, that is the nation of the Hebrews coming from Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. But the rest of the children of Abraham, including his grandson, Esau, they are actually reckoned among the Gentile nations. So there's only one Hebrew nation. Okay. And but from the sons of Isaac, one should become an holy seed. And that holy seed is Jacob. Okay. And should not be reckoned among the Gentiles. And that's why the word Gentiles is Gueya. Uh, you can actually visit the website as well. There's a tab on. What is a Gentile? Are all Gentiles the same? Because, you know, the Gentiles, there's a necessity to understand it because there are a lot of heresies about them. But that's right. Due to that separation, there's one holy seed that's not reckoned among the Gentiles. And that started from back when in the days of uh, from the Tower of Babel. And we'll save that for going. That's a whole other lesson. Sorry. Well, that clearly shows that the Israelites can't be Gentiles. And in the New Testament, where it says Gentiles, it actually means Gentile. As Brother Zachwell said, Hebrews are not Gentiles. Right. For he should become the portion of the Most High, 
then all his seed had fallen into the possession of Elohim. And notice all his seed had fallen into the possession of Elohim because his seed are those that actually believe on the promised seed, Yache. The rest of them, when they die in their iniquity, they are reckoned among the Gentiles when they die. And notice I'm very keen what I'm saying. When they die in their iniquity, they're reckoned among the Gentiles. But in their lives, they're just sinners of Israel, right? Counted as uncircumcised of heart. That it should be unto the Lord a people for his possession above all nations, and that it should become a kingdom and priest and a holy nation. Uh, there's a responsibility for the children of Israel to be examples of believers and to minister unto Yahche by work in righteousness and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. And we went our way, and we announced to Sarah all that we had told him. And they both rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And he built there an altar to Ahiah, who had delivered him, and who was making him rejoice in the land of his sojourning. So we see Abraham, he's rejoicing here from what he just got told, okay? And this is in the seventh month, as we've seen when the angels came. And he celebrated a festival of joy in this month, a seven days. A festival of joy in this month, seven days, okay? Near the altar which he had built at the well of the oak. Right, so the feast was first celebrated in Beersheba. Continue. And he built booths for himself and for his servants on this festival. And he was the first to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles on the earth. See, so it first got revealed right here with Abraham. Okay, continue, please. And during these seven days, he brought each day to the altar a burnt offering to Ahiah, two oxen, two rams, seven sheep, one he goat for a sin offering, that he might atone thereby for himself and for his seed. And he celebrated this feast during seven days, rejoicing with all his heart and with all his soul. So this is a time of joy. It's just rejoicing, really being thankful. Okay. He and all those who were in his house. And there was no stranger with him. Now, this lets you know that the opportunity was always there for the Gentiles. Right. He said he and all those that were in his house. Isaac was the holy seed. Everybody else was there celebrating, right. letting you know that salvation was always for the Gentiles. And right. notice it said that was in his house because Galatians chapter 3 lets you know that those that believe in that promised seed, Yache, accounted for the seed of Abraham. Because they're walking by the faith of faithful Abraham. Right. And through Yacha, they are children of Allah I am too. So Abraham being a father of many nations, it was being shown in the testimonies of old time. All right, continue. And there was no stranger with him, nor any that was uncircumcised. All right, and now we have the Gentiles, though they are those who are uncircumcised in the flesh. By faith in Yacha, according to Colossians chapter 2, about verse 10 and 11, they have the circumcision of the heart. Right. obeying having the law written on their hearts and their conscience in the meanwhile accusing or excusing them knowing the law from the heart and believing on that name yache mishiaka the only name given under heaven wherein we may be saved and he blessed his creator who had created him in his generation for he had created him according to his good pleasure. For he knew and perceived that from him would arise the plan of righteousness for the eternal generations. And from his holy seed, so that it should become like him who had made all things. And he blessed and rejoiced, and he called the name of this festival, the festival of Ahiah, a joy acceptable to the Most High Elohim. And we blessed him forever. And all his seed after him throughout all the generations of the earth. All his seed after him throughout all the generations of the earth. Right. And we know that's not only Israel because the New Testament, it was revealed to Paul that to be counted for the seed of Abraham is by faith. All right. Because he celebrated this festival in its season according to the testimony of the heavenly tablets according to the testimony of the heavenly tablets so though it was firstly revealed to abraham and the earth at that time it was already written on the heavenly tablets right. letting us know that these are holy feasts heavenly feasts at that this is not the rudiments of the world spoken of in colossians chapter 2 these are the things written on the heavens 
what Paul was speaking about in Colossus was in reference to the things of the world, right. the Christmases, the Thanksgivings, and the, the, the birthdays, and things of that nature. These are all festivals of the world. These feasts of Ahaya, because he even said in Leviticus 23, these are my feasts. Right. <laughs> he told us very straightly, it belongs to him, so that we know. When we do these feasts, we're getting to celebrate with angels by keeping these feasts, brothers and sisters. For those of us who seek to be spiritual and want to experience spiritual things, we, we sometimes get away from the simplicity of the spiritual things. Right. To do the will of Allah Hayim is spiritual because the law is spiritual. <laughs> right. To keep the commandments is partaking in spiritual things. That's a spiritual gift. That's obedience. That's discipline. These are spirits of righteousness. For this reason, it is ordained on the heavenly tablets concerning Israel that they should celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles seven days with joy in the seventh month, acceptable before Ahia, a statue forever throughout their generations every year. Notice right here, when it was first revealed, it was for seven days. Now, as we continue reading, we're going to learn how the eighth day of the feast came about. All right. Continue. And to this, there is no limit of days. There is no limit of days. This feast can never be undone. Matter of fact, it's even going to still be going on in Yahweh's kingdom. Right. When you read Zechariah chapter 14. For it is ordained forever regarding Israel that they should celebrate it and dwell in booths and set refs upon their heads. So it is ordained for, the, for Israel that we should celebrate it and dwell in booths and set wreaths upon our heads. No, that was a wreath, my bad. Yeah. Sorry, no man. Sorry. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> set wreaths upon our heads. I have prosperous. We're trying to learn how to make wreaths right. so we can get some to wear some. <laughs> we need to learn how to make tents out of bushes, too. This is a new experience. Some bamboo. Yeah, we got some bamboo and some rope. We need, hopefully, I have prosperous to get this thing done. <laughs> Continue, please. And take leafy bowls and willows from the brook. So if some of you, you may be around where, in areas where you can actually access a willow brook. You can get those type of leaves so we can have, all right? And Abraham took branches of palm trees. We have palm trees in Egypt, so we can access right. those. And the fruit of goodly trees. And every day going around the altar with the branches seven times a day in the morning. He praised and gave thanks to his Allah for all things in joy. All right. So we see how we can get goodly trees, bows of palms, bows of willow. So we get some nice looking trees, nice looking leaves, and we just praise every day, giving thanks. And we see that it was established for seven days. We need to continue to see how more was revealed even after Abraham's time. This not only helps us understand the feast, but also helps us see that Ahia revealed understanding of his law over a process of time. The whole law wasn't completely understood from the beginning. There were certain things that were established from the beginning, and over time, he edified more. He gave more understanding when the time was appointed. So we see here, the feast got instituted in Abraham's day. Now we're going to Jacob's day to see how the feast came to its fullness. Jubilees chapter 32 Verse 16 to 29, please. All right. Jubilee chapter 32, verse 16. And on the following night, on the 22nd day of this month. Now, this month is referring to the seventh month. Jacob resolved to build that place and to surround the court with a wall and to sanctify it and make it holy forever for himself and his children after him. Now, the 22nd, remember, the Feast of Tabernacles starts on the 15th. So the 22nd is the seventh day of the feast. And Jacob wanted to build the temple at that time. But let's continue to see what happened. And Ahia appeared to him by night and blessed him and said unto him, Thy name shall not be called Jacob, but Israel shall they name thy name. And he said unto him again, I am Ahia who created the heaven and the earth. And I will increase thee and multiply thee exceedingly. And kings shall come forth from thee, and they shall judge everywhere wherever the foot of the sons of men has trodden. And I will give to thy seed all the earth which is under heaven. And they shall judge all the nations according to their desires. And after that, they shall get possession of the whole earth and inherit it forever. 
And he finished speaking with him, and he went up from him. And Jacob looked till he had ascended into heaven. And he saw in a vision of the night, and behold, an angel descended from heaven with seven tablets in his hands. And he gave them to Jacob, and he read them, and knew all that was written therein, which would befall him and his sons throughout all ages. And he showed him all that was written on the tablets, and he said unto him, Do not build this place, and do not make it an eternal sanctuary, and do not dwell here, for this is not the place. Go to the house of Abraham thy father, and dwell with Isaac thy father, until the day of death of thy father. For in Egypt thou shalt die in peace, and in this land thou shalt be buried with honor in the sepulchre of thy fathers, with Abraham and Isaac. Fear not, for thou hast seen and read it, thus shall it all be. And do thou write down everything as thou hast seen and read. And he told him to write it. So Jacob wrote books so you can understand that the quote unquote Bible wasn't the first record of the Hebrews. Right. There was a record that Jacob had to give to his children. That's how in Genesis 49, he told his children what would befall them. We're sitting here reading how he found out what would befall them right. by dreams and visions. Understanding being given by the spirit of Allah. Hayim. Continue, please. And Jacob said, how can I remember all that I have read and seen? And he said unto him, I will bring all things to thy remembrance. And this is why we are so humbled when we understand where the wisdom comes from, where the understanding comes from. Who makes us to remember righteous things? Who makes us to do things uprightly, to bear the fruits of the Spirit, known as by Ahaya's grace? Okay, It's not something that we're doing and it's not power in ourselves. All right is realizing that it's in Yache and through Yache and by Yache. All things are and all things consist and all things are for. Because Ahaya, he loveth the sun. <laughs> Continue. And he went up from him and he awoke from his sleep and he remembered everything which he had read and seen. And he wrote down all the words which he had read and seen. So you see how, how the records were coming together and what is it? Isaiah 34 and 16. He says, Seek you out of the book of Ahaya and read, right. or none of them shall want her mate. Or none of them shall want her mate. Because, and, because he said, For his mouth has commanded and his spirit hath gathered them. We're getting to see how the Hebrew records got put together. Ahaya, he shows people what he wants them to put, and he makes them remember, and it gets written down. Right. Even we went over in one of the live chats how Ezra was given the Holy Spirit. And they wrote 204 books. So you can understand that they're the Hebrew records, there are many records. It's just to confirm which ones are true by the law and the testimony. But this day, right? Because there's a lot of Gnostic gospels that are not spiritually inspired from right. the law and the testimony. Right. So. And he celebrated there yet another day. And he sacrificed thereon according to all that he had sacrificed on the former days. So now on the 23rd, he celebrated another day. He added a day here. Continue. And he called his name addition. For this day was added in the former days he called the feast. So originally the Feast of Tabernacles was called a Feast of Ahaya, a joy acceptable to the Most High Allah. All right. By Abraham. Then I, uh, Jacob called it the feast. And then he called it eight day edition, <laughs> right? <laughs> Continue. Uh, and thus it was manifested that it should be. And it is written on the heavenly tablets. Now that lets you know where it really came from. Who inspired Jacob to do it? It says, and thus it was manifested that it should be. Right. And it was written on the heavenly tablets. Continue. Wherefore it was revealed to him that he should celebrate it. So Allah showed him what the truth was see how the law got revealed in its time that helps you understand how there are certain things that are commandments that we cannot do today that our forefathers did but it was not unlawful at that time so it was still counted righteous but if we do it today where the law commands us not to do it we're in iniquity because the law was revealed that we shouldn't do it All right. continue and his name was called addition because that it was recorded amongst the days of the feast days according to the number of the days of the year. And thus it was manifested that it should be. And it was written on the heavenly tablets, wherefore it was revealed to him that he should celebrate it. 
and add it to the seven days of the feast. It's just interesting how you see how it's revealed to a man. Right. So that Kazo, we don't listen to men and whatnot. It's revealed to a man to reveal it. As we see, Jacob was a prophet too. Right. right? And his name was called Edition because it was recorded amongst the days to the feast days according to the number of the days of the year. So that's how the feast became eight days. And now let's go to Leviticus to see when Ahaya explains to the children of Israel because we had went into captivity and we were worshiping the idols of Egypt and whatnot. And here we are today, some of us coming from spiritual Sodom in Egypt, America, and, also, and the rest of us around the world, and also the Gentiles that are being awakened called by Yache because he has remnant of Edom and of the heathen that are called by his name that are being awakened as well and now we're being brought to the righteousness of the law so let's get that on edification out of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 33 to 35 and 39 to 44 please Leviticus chapter 23 verse 33 and the highest spake unto Moses saying speaking to the children of Israel saying the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles and that 15th of the seventh month is that is the feast of tabernacles is coming this weekend after the sabbath day when the sun goes down and is there's no sunlight on the face of the sky that is the 15th day of the seventh month that is the first day of the feast of tabernacles and that first day is a holy convocation so that means that first day is a sabbath so we do no work on that day and it's a day we can cook, so we get to enjoy doing some cooking on that day as well. All right. So when the sun goes down at the end of the seventh day, the Sabbath, then the feast comes in on the first day right. of the week. Remember to keep the Sabbath, the regular Sabbath. Right. Do not cook on the regular Sabbath. That will profane the Sabbath. That's right. And if you're not familiar with how to keep the Sabbath, please visit the video on the Sabbath day to get understanding on that. Okay, the 15th day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto Ahia. We know about those seven days from Abraham. Continue. Verse 35. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Right, that's why there's no work and no business, no buying, no selling, no personal pleasure, but rejoicing in Ahia with joy and sincerity and cooking up some food. For also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto a higher seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. On the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And that eighth day, that's that addition, right? So that last day of the feast is also a Sabbath and a holy convocation. And that last day comes in as the week after, after the regular Sabbath day, when the sun goes down and there's no light of the sun on the sky, that is the last day of the feast, called the last great day. On sundown 9 28, 2019, so that's of the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. So that one should fall on the first day of the week, too. You're right. Both the feast days fall on the first day of the week. Thank you for confirming that. Verse 40 And ye shall take you on the first day. The boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before Ahia your Elohim seven days. All right, it's time to praise. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Ahia seven days in a year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Forever the feast does not get undone, no matter where we are. Continue. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booth seven days. All right, and we have to dwell in booth seven days. If you have not access to be able to literally make a booth, some people don't Allah I am strengthen those who hasn't been given the gift to be able to do that, we make a tent. Some people may actually be able to get a tent. Some people have to just make a tent in their homes. Right. It's all for righteousness. We're trying to trying to do by all means what it takes to please Ahaya. If you have to make that tent in your room, take the sheets, set it up, take right. some rope, do what you have to do. Make that tent and dwell in it for seven days, rejoicing in Allah. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. So, Israelites, we have to do it. All right? As it is written. And the Gentiles, opportunities there for you. All right. Perform all righteousness is in the law. 
why not jump in the booth? <laughs> you right. see Abraham and all his household did it. All right. You are the seed of Abraham by faith. Therefore, join us in the feast. Let us rejoice in Ahaya, Ahayam, and our Adonayache together. That the generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. All right. This is a humbling experience, too. All right. This is to remember the humility that we were brought into. Simplicity. Yes. And there's a testimony of the humility of Allah Hayyam. Because he dwelt in a tent too. The whole 40 years he dwelt in a tent at the tabernacle of meeting. So it's for us to, to be like Allah Hayyam. Simple people. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of Ahaya. Now... What verse was that? That was verse 44. All right. I think I need to read verse 43. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Ahiah Yalahayim. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of Ahiah. Oh, thank you. And now let's also see that the feast was kept even after we are went into captivity and people were being brought back to the land. Look at uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 9, and verse 13 to 18, please. All right. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which Ahiah had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women. And all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. So that was the Feast of Trumpets, the first day of the seventh month. All right, continue. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Right. Faith always came by hearing. All right. And there was always a preacher because Paul said, how, how can they call upon him whom they have not heard? And how can they hear unless they have a preacher? And how can they have a preacher unless they be sent? This faith coming by hearing was of old. The people listened attentively as the scriptures said. Okay. All right. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit, pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah and Shimei. And Ananiah, and Urijah, and Hilkiah, and Messiah, and on his right hand, and on his left, and on his left hand, Padiah, and Mishael, and Malchiah, and Hashem, Hashbadana, and Zechariah, and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed Ahiah, the great Elohim. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. And they bowed their heads and worshipped Ahiah with their faces to the ground. Also Jeshua and Bani and Shirbiah and Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, <laughs> Hadijah. Oh, these names are interesting. Hodiah. What was that? Uh, yeah, that got to be Hodiah. Maasiah, Kelita, Azariah, Jazabed, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites. Called, <laughs> the Levites is easy. Uh, right, we get the a simple word. Yeah, the Levites. <laughs> <laughs> Cause the people to understand the law. Now, it's interesting to see how even then, faith came by hearing, and the people had to be taught. And these right. are the Israelites sitting here. The Levites had to give understanding and other people that were standing there. Continue. And the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of the law of Elohim distinctly and gave the sense right. and caused them to understand the reading. Right, because one can sit there and read all day. But if, if it isn't given of Elohim, one won't understand. Right. And those who are humble understand this. That's why when Philip came to the Ethiopian right. in the book of Acts, Philip asked him, understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, how can I? Said, Unless some man show me. Right. So there's a humility that comes with actually learning what the scriptures are talking about. So Rock chapter 21 and 21. 
It says, uh, learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold and like a bracelet upon his right arm. So uh, a wise man actually wants to learn. I appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it. All right. I'm in verse 9. Uh, Nehemiah 8. Nehemiah 8. And Nehemiah, which is the, which is the Tereshatha, yeah. and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto Ahiah your Elohim. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. And they found written in the law which Ahiah had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch other branches and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and branches of thick trees, to make booths, as it is written. So the people went forth, and brought them, and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of Elohim. See, you see how they were making booths wherever they could. Right. This is why we're saying, if you can just get you a, you know, because we all don't have access to everything, and right. everyone doesn't have the same skill. Some people don't have a yard. Some people don't. You, know, you have to use what you have. Right. Cause Even if you have to make a booth in your living room, you know. Right. It's about sincerity. Right. The sincerity to Allah. And in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim, and all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths, and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua the son of Nun, until the day had not the children of Israel done so, and there was very great gladness. Also day by day, from the first day until the last day, he read in the book of the law of Elohim, and they kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day was a solemn assembly, according to the manner. The eighth day is a solemn assembly, that's another coming together. Right. So that's just a quick synopsis of how the feast came about and seeing that the feast was kept, and here we are. By the grace of Ahaya Lahayam and the hope in our Donayache, we get the opportunity to keep the feast. And we're in a similar manner to Ezra because they were relearning the law because of the captivity. And it hadn't been kept since the time of Joshua. So we're really in the same predicament as Ezra and them. They really had to be retaught. The people had to really be retaught and really see how far away they had gone from their captivity to the righteousness of Allah right. so it's very very relevant All right now again the first day of the feast which is the 15th day of the Hebrew calendar is a holy convocation so we can cook the feast comes in after the Sabbath day this weekend so it would be wise to get one's food preparations buy what you have to buy and whatnot before the Sabbath day right. now you want to get everything you need before the Sabbath because this week is a double feast weekend. We have two festivities because right after the Sabbath's over, you have the Feast of Tabernacles coming in. Right. And we can't buy or sell on the Sabbath days. The feast is an eight-day feast, but we only dwell in booths for seven days of the feast. Right. The eighth day, we don't dwell in booths. If one might be wondering why not the eighth day, the eighth day represents eternity. Right. There's 7,000 years in this existence in this world and carnality the seven thousand years are represented by the seven days of tabernacles and the eighth day we come out of this tabernacle right. <laughs> we put off this earthly tabernacle and put on the heavenly because the eighth day is eternity the seventh day is yache's time the thousand year reign that's why it's even interestingly enough it comes in on the sabbath day right. and then the eighth day goes into eternity okay so for little backstory I guess of the oh, feast right. yeah. the symbolism oh, all right. feel free to email us if you have any questions or comments in regards to preparations for the feast or questions on any other topic at hebrewreaders at gmail.com 
And if you don't have the calendar yet, to stay up on all the feast days, please go to the website. It should be in the link below in the description box. And you can download the calendar. It's on the tab under the holy calendar and feast days. What is it? I think it's some is named something right. along those right. lines. So you can download the PDF. You can have the calendar. And um, if you want a JPEG, if you're able to have JPEG versions, just send us an email. We'll send you over the JPEG version of the calendar. And I have a question just for the people listening. On the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, can you build your booth on that day? In Leviticus chapter 23 and 40 says, You shall take you on the first day bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and bows of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before Ahaya your Alahayim seven days. And you shall keep it a feast unto Ahaya seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. Is there anything... Hmm? To, to answer the question for um, it says in Jubilee 16 and 21 it okay. says and he built booth for himself and his servants on this festival and he was the first to celebrate the feast of tabernacles on the earth well the scripture says what it says they built booths on the festival and he was the first to celebrate it. So, <laughs> for what the scriptures say, you can't build a booth on the first day. Crazy, actually. So, build your booth on the first day if you didn't get the opportunity to prepare it beforehand. And also, have you some goodly bows and leaves and uh, thick bushes, thick branches for the feast. Edification. Just make sure you have your stuff to build your booth before the holy day yeah because he said you're supposed to go you're supposed to have those things and then you can build your booth on that day right so you have to prepare before the shabbat day right. of everything you need to build what you're going to build on the feast day right because right. it's part of the feast to build the booth so mm -hmm. that's a part of the experience right all right all right all right you got anything else uh you definitely don't want to go looking for Stuff for building a booth on the Sabbath day because we've seen in scriptures nah. a man died for gathering sticks on the Sabbath. Don't so do that. Do not transgress the law. From what was shown, we build the booth on the first day. That's a part of the experience for the feast. All right. Have you some goodly bows for those of you who have access to some nicer trees and enjoy this feast. All right. And don't overthink it. You know, um, if you don't have the resources to actually build a booth, you know, take some rope and some sheets and build something in your room or whatever the case is. It, it's, it's just the experience and just the keeping of the commandments so that we can understand what our forefathers went through it's in the wilderness. It's a remembrance and it's a humbling thing. So don't be too hard on yourself if you're not able to. You know, build a booth and all that, all, and have an elaborate tin or whatever right. case it is. Don't right. don't beat yourself up right. because it's about the heart. Yeah. So it's not a vain show. Right. And in agreement with what you said, notice that they said the people hadn't dwelt in booths since the days of Joshua. Right. So you can see that, and they were not counted sinners just because they weren't in the booths. So you can understand if you don't literally have the ability to build an actual booth out of bushes. It's, you're doing it from the heart. Right. You, the board soccer means a tent, a pavilion. Right. You take and set up in your room with your sheet and whatnot. I know at the heart, man. He's looking to see who is going to do whatever they can right. to serve him, to fulfill his word. It's, it's the simplicity. Right. As Brother Zachary exhorted, don't overthink it. All right. All right. That being said, enjoy your feast day. All right. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom, everybody.